thank you. Thank you for this kind introduction. Okay, it's stressful to be here, so I will get right into it. Who wants to leave to 85? I can't see you, but you can put your hand up. Whoever didn't put their hand up, you know it's a trick question. <laughs> it's not so hard these days to leave to 85. The life expectancy for women in France is 85. The problem, though, with living to 85 is that you get 30% chance of getting dementia, most probably Alzheimer's disease. And that's the scary one. That's the one that makes you forget the most important things in your life, your loved one's names and faces and your address and really who you are. It's chronic and fatal and very, very scary and extremely prevalent. I told you 30%, but it's a merciful estimate. Some studies say 50%. At 50-50 chance, you either have it or you care for someone that has it. Right now, there is no drug to stop it, cure it, or prevent it. We can just slow down the disease, and the efficacy of these drugs is limited. So with growing life expectancy worldwide, this is becoming a really burning problem for the global health and for the economy ahead of us. But I'm here today to tell you a little bit about a new science that can bring the Alzheimer patients, their families, and really all of us, some hope. Neuroimmunology. So I'm a neuroimmunologist, and in my work I'm trying to understand how can we use our immune system to cure the brain from neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. And it's a bit surprising that we don't know the answer to this question yet, because we are using our immune system to cure other problems with our bodies all the time, like pain or infection or recently even cancer. So why not the brain? And how come it took us so long to understand that we could even try? The answer to this question is a kind of an interesting story that I would like to share with you. So let's start from our immune system. The number one job of your immune system is to detect and kill pathogens, bacteria, viruses, also cancer cells, and the immune system is there for you to clear any damaged tissue. So if I scratch myself, the immune system cells will come to the wound and clear all the debris, and this is a critical step before the tissue can regenerate itself. It sort of makes sense if you think about it. If you break a window, you need to remove the broken glass before you can fix the window. So we can think about the immune system like a team of security guards and cleaners. And like cleaners and security guards, these guys are constantly on the move. They are born in your bone marrow, in the long and flat bones, like the leg, the hip, the sternum. They go out to the blood, and then they go to your organs. In the organs, they basically go around and see if everything is fine. Maybe there is some damage to clear, maybe some virus to kill. And then they go to the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are like um, information exchange centers for the immune system. This is where the cells talk to each other about what they have seen in the tissues and make decisions about what to do next. Maybe we need to mount a super focused response against this virus that I've seen somewhere. To make it more vivid, I will give you an example. After you get a vaccine, it's usually in your arm, in your muscle, the cells that are in your muscles, the immune cells, will see the wound, the damage, and will clear it so the tissue can regenerate itself, but also the vaccine itself, usually harmless proteins from the virus or bacteria you were vaccinated against. So the immune cells were cleared out, but then they go to the lymph node, very often this one, sometimes it gets swollen. Um, and this is where the immune cells make a decision to give you a long-term immune protection against whatever this thing is that they saw in your arm. So, this process of cells traveling through the organs and then to the lymph node is called immune surveillance. And the entire body is under this immune surveillance, except of the brain. This was proven by the experiments at the beginning of the 20th century. For example, if you inject a blue ink into mouse blood, it will go pretty much everywhere. The kidneys, the spleen, the skin, everything turns blue, but not the brain. The brain stays white. So this, the, the blue ink cannot go from the blood to the brain. Why would the immune cells go? When you take the brain and look at it under the microscope, you will most probably not find any immune cells. And finally, we couldn't um, locate the physical connection between the brain and the lymph nodes. The closest ones are in the neck. We just couldn't find any way for the cells to get out. So they don't have a way in, they don't have a way out. They're not there under the microscope. 
The brain is free from immune surveillance. On the other hand, there was a lot of studies about a disease called multiple sclerosis. It's a devastating disease where the immune cells do come into the brain, but they have a job of killing some of the key brain cells, leading to progressive um, loss of movement and coordination. So normal situation, no immune cells in the brain. Yes, immune cells in the brain, you are sick. The brain is free from immune surveillance. Why? Brain is special. And we know that it's special. If you injure it, it doesn't grow back. You cannot get a new one. You cannot transplant it. And this is where our soul is, right? This is where our emotion and memories and wishes and regrets and personality, really everything dear to us is really in our head. But then if it's so special and important, why would it give up the help of cleaners and security team? This question was in the drawers of both immunologists and neuroscientists for a very, very long time. Until around 25 years ago, when a breakthrough came from yet another field, regenerative medicine. So here's the problem. Let's say I lost a hand in an accident, clear cut. This, the surgeons can put it back, they can sew it back, including the nerves. And after a while, with help of rehabilitation, I'll be able to move my fingers and feel with them because the nerves regenerate. This will never happen in the brain. If I lose a piece of the brain, it's not gonna grow back. You can glue it back, but the, nerves, the neurons will just die off. What's the difference between the two locations? Well, the hand has access to the cleaners and security. And we talked about how you need to remove the damage before the tissue can try to regenerate itself. So maybe even if we don't have normally the immune system cells infiltrating the brain, maybe it would be beneficial to have them after there is some damage so they can clear the damage and allow the tissue to regenerate itself. This new framework made us rethink this old experiments from the beginning of the 20th century. In 2023, if you inject a blue dye into a mouse, it's still not gonna go into the brain. But now we know that many other things do go, including a small population of immune cells. They're very rare, so if you take the brain and look at it under the microscope, you will most probably not find them still. But they're there, and they really make a difference. 2015, we found the, the connection between the brain and the lymph node, and it's right here, under the skull, on the top of your brain. And by the way, this is a flat bone, has a lot of bone marrow. And we knew that before, but it took us a few years to understand that it also has a channels, direct holes in the bone that will allow the immune system cells to go from the bone marrow directly to the brain. These discoveries that I just described are the work of the last eight, 10 years. Neuroimmunology is blooming and it's great for me, but it's also good for you because, uh, because Alzheimer's disease. Biologically speaking, Alzheimer's disease is accumulation of toxic proteins in the brain that cause damage to the neurons. Toxic proteins, damage. Sounds like something cleaners and security would be able to take care of, right? Right now, teams of scientists all around the world are trying to understand how can we convince our immune system to help us clean these toxic proteins and damage from our brain, stop the disease, or maybe even help the brain to regenerate itself. We don't know yet if it's gonna work, but we work every day to find out. Thank you.